Dolphins aren't venomous, thankfully, but their portrayal as friendly and harmless creatures is largely exaggerated. These marine mammals are highly intelligent, which makes them very close to humans, and just like us, they can be really mean. Of course, there are known cases of dolphins saving people's lives at sea. But if they're not in the mood and see a person stranded on the waves, chances are they'll bully that unfortunate soul. And mind you, a single hit from a dolphin's snout can cause serious injuries even in a shark. For a human, well, there's simply no chance of survival. Now, we all love Dumbo with his big flappy ears. But trying to pat an elephant on the trunk in the wild isn't a good idea. Unless you want to be stamped on, that is. Elephants are easily made nervous, and contrary to the popular myth that they see humans as cute, like we do puppies, they actually don't. For them, we're mostly a threat. And with that size and strength, they only need to lift a foot to turn a person into a flatbread. From what their name implies, anteaters eat ants and termites, and they can't bite you as they don't have teeth. But before you reach out to pet this weird cutie, make sure to take note of those claws. They're huge, aren't they? Anteaters use them to dig for lunch, but won't hesitate to leave you a few fingers short. Better admire them from a safe distance. Leopard seals look like big, fluffy sea cats. But even your own kitty can have a bad hair day and give you a nasty scratch. Seals eat penguins, though, so you can guess they're pretty dangerous when agitated. Their teeth are really sharp, and they're known to attack people when they're not in the mood. So try not to interact with them unless you absolutely have to. In the water, catching up with you won't be a problem for a seal. One animal has the nastiest temperament on the planet. That's easy, a honey badger. Most of all, it resembles a skunk that visits the wrestling gym five times a week. And it smells like that too. The honey badger weighs as much as a two-year-old child, but it's not afraid of anyone. It doesn't care who's confronting it, be it a venomous snake, two lions, or a pack of hyenas. It'll attack them and win. You want honey? No problem. Befriend a badger, and it'll demolish a beehive for you. It's not afraid of stings. The honey badger has thick skin that's difficult to break through, and also sharp claws and strong jaws. The honey badger scares everyone in Africa, but it's got cousins in North America and Eurasia. Those guys have a bad temper too. Although it's difficult to call it a giant, Wolverines will not hesitate to attack a bear or an elk. The animal grows no larger than a medium-sized dog. If you offended it, then I don't envy you. It's hardy, knows how to swim, and is a fast runner. Wide paws are like snowshoes and don't allow it to fall into the snow. You can't hide from a wolverine on a tree either. It climbs with uncanny agility. The wombat is a cute animal that resembles a fluffy bear. It's stocky and weighs as much as a German shepherd. The wombat lives in Australia, where it digs deep holes and has the most original protection in the world. If the enemy tries to get into its underground house, the wombat blocks the entrance with its, um, backside. This part of the body consists of four fused bones. For a wombat, it's sort of a shield and it's difficult for a predator to bite through it. The animal is peaceful, but it has poor eyesight and, well, it isn't very smart. If it thinks you're posing a threat, it will attack. The duck-billed platypus lays eggs, which is pretty uncommon for mammals. They also have venom glands, even more uncommon. They deliver their toxin through small, spur-like stingers on the heels of their hind feet. The venom is harmless for humans, but a sting is painful and often swells at the sight. Surprisingly, the southern short-tailed shrew has some venom too. It's not powerful enough to seriously harm a human, but it's sure to cause muscle problems and swelling. One shrew bite has enough venom to take down 200 mice and can even be harmful to cats. They inject the paralyzing venom with their grooved teeth. Raccoons may not have any venom like others on the list, but they carry something that can be even more dangerous – disease. Trash makes up part of these guys' diet, so they're best left untouched. 
Although they're usually shy and will retreat when people come nearby, it's their notorious bite and scratches that can get you sick. Catfish look goofy and harmless, but the spines in their dorsal and pectoral fins do contain venom. When it gets into your skin, a painful sting by the way, the poison causes intense swelling that can even lead to tissue loss. Scientists believe there are more than 1,600 species of venomous catfish. Meow. The bright, beautiful colors of a poison dart frog serve as a warning. Don't touch. One frog has enough poison for 20,000 mice. Another reason to be glad that you're not a mouse. They slurp termites and crickets with a long, sticky tongue. They also love small beetles. And scientists think it's the beetle diet that makes these frogs one of the most toxic animals on the planet. Komodo dragons are the largest lizard in the world. But they don't have only size on their side. Their saliva is poisonous and can cause infections. They deliver it thanks to razor-sharp teeth. They don't attack humans very often, but there have been a few serious cases. Another venomous lizard is the Gila monster. Thanks to its sluggishness, this lizard doesn't pose much danger to humans. You'd have enough time to run away. People used to believe the lizard has toxic breath, but it's actually venom glands in its lower jaw. A journalist was once bitten by a Gila monster, and he described it as one of the most painful bites he'd ever gotten, comparing it to hot lava. He was also bitten by hot lava? Wow! One seemingly harmless little critter holds a Guinness World Record. Meet the most dangerous ant in the world, the bulldog ant. Nearly the length of a matchstick, this Australian ant attacks using its massive pincher-like jaws and a stinger on the back at the same time. Its venom can take down a full-grown person in just 15 minutes. Harlequin beetle looks formidable, and it is. This bug's body reaches 3 inches in length. And its front legs are often even longer than that. They help it crawl on trees, getting from branch to branch, and males also use them to impress females. Ooh la la! Despite the looks, harlequin beetles aren't really dangerous. They won't bite you even if you corner them. And if you, by any chance, grow cabbage in your backyard, you probably would try to corner them. These bugs feed on its leaves. Still, better not to touch them with your bare hands. They exude a foul-smelling liquid that both stinks and stings, causing skin irritation. Wear those gloves, will ya? You know what also stinks? Now, besides my socks, squash bugs. If you have a garden patch, these pests can be more than just a nuisance. They could spoil the squash you've been lovingly growing for the fall, hence the name. And if you squash them, they begin to smell just awful, hence the pun. Squash bugs are also often mistaken for stink bugs, but those are even more notorious. They begin stinking even if you so much as touch them. Wow, sensitive! Giraffe weevil is probably the most harmless little fella on this list, but not much is known about it yet. It gets its name from the long, spiny neck. This adaptation helps them build nests and fight over other weevils for food and mates. It may be placid, but the red covering of its wings lets predators know the bug is either foul-tasting or poisonous, or both. Fluffy alpacas may seem warm-hearted, but they still have ways of defending themselves. They can spit up to 10 feet, and you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes because it contains stomach acid, along with chewed up grass. They can bite with their sharp fighting teeth that are at the back of their mouths, and they have soft toes to give enemies a good kick. They can't really do more damage than you might get in a fight with a child, but it's best not to upset them. There are three things that brings out the nasty side of a Tasmanian devil. When there's a predator nearby, when they're competing for a mate, and when they're protecting their meal. Also Bugs Bunny, but that's a cartoon. These guys normally feed on insects, birds, frogs, and fish, and they like scavenging more than hunting. But if you intrude upon their home for any reason, be prepared for a painful bite. Their teeth are strong enough to eat through bones. Pufferfish can inflate to several times their normal size to protect themselves against predators. 
Hey, my brother-in-law can do that too. Eh, just kidding. Most animals shouldn't try eating them anyways. There's enough poison inside them to finish off 30 people, and there's no antidote. So, if it's just you, you'll need to invite some friends along to spread out the poison. Nah, I just made that up. Swans tend to see humans as the biggest danger to their homes and families. Male swans get especially aggressive during the spring nesting season from April to June. When kayakers, rowers, or anglers get too close to their nests, swans start hissing and flapping their wings. If you don't pay attention to these warning signs, the swan might even try to flip your boat over. Slow lorises are the only venomous primates in the world. They carry poison in their elbows. It's transferred to their mouths during grooming to protect their babies. Plus, they scare off predators like pythons and eagle hawks using special markings that show how fearsome they are. If a slow loris bites a person who ends up on its territory or annoys it, the result can be rashes, anaphylactic shock, or, you know, even worse. The one and only dingo. These animals have been around for hundreds of years across Southeast Asia to Australia. Their golden brown color blends with their surroundings, making them even more dangerous when lurking around for prey. And just like a wolf-dog hybrid, many dingoes are also bred with domesticated dogs to create a dingo-doggo combo. Yeah, I said that. Now, that may sound cute, but they're anything but. They're still wild animals that hunt in packs and are ruthless even to humans. Owning a cat isn't usually a big deal, unless you're dealing with a serval. These wild cats are bigger than the typical house cat and look like little leopards. Yeah, they look majestic and like to jump from place to place, but they're still not highly recommended to keep at home. They've been known to cause a ruckus in the house and rip up curtains and couches with their claws. They rarely listen to humans and are aggressive when played with. They're very clever and need loads of places to climb and explore, and do all kinds of survival things. Koalas are also animals that enjoy climbing tree branches and eating. But having one of these at home is totally unadvisable. These animals are very protective of their young and aggressive if they feel threatened. And despite being called koala bears, they're not related to bears at all. They're marsupials, or in English, related to kangaroos and wombats. And like kangaroos, they have pouches for the babies to grow up in. They have opposable thumbs like primates and humans to grab onto branches and climb. Trying to domesticate these animals won't work, and feeding them is the main reason they can't live with humans. They need special eucalyptus leaves that grow in forests in order to survive which means they need large forest ranges to thrive. What do you get when you have a possum-looking animal the size of your palm with wings? Nope, not a bat, but a sugar glider. And they don't actually have wings, so they don't technically fly. Bats still hold the record for the only winged mammal out there. Rather, these marsupials have a thick layer of skin that stretches from their hands to their back angles that acts like a glider. Their thick furry tails are used to steer themselves while gliding down. And while they might seem cute and superhero-like, they don't belong indoors with people. They're animals that are naturally born to live in big families with their own kind. When people get these animals as pets, they usually have one or two at home, and they need trees to scale up and glide down. Not to mention sugar gliders are nocturnal and sleep all day to be active at night which goes against humans, unless you're a night owl. Monarchs feed on milkweed, a plant containing a potent toxin. They've acquired immunity to it, and as a side effect, butterflies accumulate the toxin in their bodies. This makes them a very unappetizing dish for birds and other predators. The concentration is so high that even humans that accidentally, or not, eat a monarch caterpillar can experience quite unpleasant consequences. Mm. Mealworm beetles are abundant almost anywhere, so you must have seen them. The most probable place to find them is a poultry farm, though. 
Mealworm larvae are often used to feed farm birds, and that's where the danger lies. Mealworms carry lots of diseases that can spread among birds and then to humans. They also like to eat chicken food and even insulation on farms, so they're not the best choice of a meal for birds, despite their name. And adult beetles produce a poison that's not harmful in small doses but causes allergy in high concentrations. If you happen to be at a poultry farm, make sure you avoid those beetles. A colorful blue-ringed octopus is no bigger than a chicken egg, but it poses serious danger to any living thing it meets. Their stings are surprisingly painless, so it can even go unnoticed at first. Even though the venom contains the happy hormone dopamine, <laughs> it'll make you anything but joyful. Respiratory <laughs> failure can come within 10 minutes. One more problem? There's no antidote. The Irukandji jellyfish may be smaller than an inch, but even the strongest pain relievers in the world won't help if one stings you. The symptoms can take up to an hour to fully kick in, and they include severe muscle aches and pain, nausea, and breathing problems. Its venom is almost 100 times stronger than a cobra's. And yeah, no anti-venom yet for this one either. But the box jellyfish has the most potent venom in the world. The creature is pretty large, yet people may not notice it since it's see-through. The jellyfish grabs onto its prey with all those toxic tentacles. The poison is enough for 60 grown people, so invite your friends. Not many can brag of surviving a rendezvous with this jelly. Okay, scratch that beach trip. Hey, let's look at the skies. You wouldn't expect a bird on this list, but alas, I bring to you the hooded pitahui. Scientists found that they're venomous when they kept experiencing numbness and a burning sensation after handling these birds. There are lots of toxins in its feathers, especially on the underside. The birds don't produce toxins themselves. They probably get them from the beetles they eat. Or how about the spur-winged goose? Again, these birds don't produce any toxins themselves. They get it from their diet of blister beetles. It's safe to touch them. But eating one can lead to irreversible consequences. Wink, wink. The toxin remains even after cooking. Now, hedgehogs may seem like the perfect pet to have around the house. But they come with some restraints. Although adorable little animals, the prickly spikes on their backs may not be for the faint-hearted. Many injuries can be a result of mishandling and the fact that they roll up into a cute ball for self-defense. They're solitary creatures as well, and can't be around other hedgehogs or anything they might find threatening. And like most solitude lovers, hedgehogs are nocturnal and like to go for late-night cruises alone. So if you do happen to get one of these spike balls, make sure to have a lot of room for it to explore daily. With a ring tail, reddish-brown color, these fluff balls make the best cuddle companions out there. I mean, who can resist the cuteness of the red panda? And no, it's not related to the giant panda, but it's still as cute. And I don't mean to burst your bubble, but it's best to leave these creatures alone. They're found in Southeast Asia in dense rainforests and can't be in captivity. And just like cats, they have sharp claws that'll redecorate your home interior, and not in a good way. When threatened, they release a foul odor to escape from danger. Hey, I can relate. Although its big fluffy ears make it even more irresistible, it's best to let these guys do their own thing. <laughs>